I would just like to use for a subject today, simply this, there it is, you're the one. Turn to somebody and say, there it is, there it is. you're the one. A person that does not know their own true value yes. will compromise the blessings of future generations. A person who does not come to a true understanding of their own identity will wear a mask of low self-esteem and shame for a lifetime. But the person who understands their worth, sees their value, knows their true identity, mm. knows their true identity, creates doors of freedom and possibility and opportunity and new beginnings for themselves and for those around them. Mm. Somebody say, that's me, Pastor. That's me. Let me say that again. A person who understands their worth and sees their value, who knows their true identity, that person creates doors of freedom and possibility and opportunity and new beginnings for themselves and for those around them. There it is. You are the one. You knowing your true purpose and identity today, because we understand our purpose evolves. You understanding your purpose and walking in it establishes new eras in time for others to model and learn from. Your decision to be who God created you to be has not just earthly effects but spiritual dimensional effects. Daniel and the three Hebrew, Hebrew boys staying true to their identity, young people in the schools of Babylon, when everybody else was doing it, they sensed that the time would arise, and it did, that they would be called upon to reflect who and what they were created to be. And thousands of years have passed, but their decision that they made thousands of years ago still remains constant today that we are not to bow to things that are beneath us come on say I will not bow to things that are beneath me it is the reason identity was the first thing that was challenged in heaven and in and in Eden Isaiah 14 13 and 14 Isaiah repeats what the devil said here he says I will ascend into heaven I will exalt my throne upon the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Satan said, I will be like the most high. In, he in the Hebrew it says, I will resemble God. I will be compared to God, the devil says. When people see God, they will see me. They say, oh, man, you and God, man, y'all. Man, both of y'all are the same. I will make myself like God. My identity will be a God. This verse was both spiritual and earthly. And so these verses, because it, it goes on to talk about Lucifer. Uh, Isaiah saw one thing with his eyes as he wrote this. An earthly Babylonian king's pride. And spiritually, he was also describing the devil's fall from heaven. Because we know the next verse says that, you know, um, talks about how he saw Satan fall from heaven. In Isaiah's description of this king of Babylon, in his apparel, Isaiah calls him, when you get home, read it, this earthly king Lucifer. In his betrayal of him and his attire, the name Lucifer is defined as morning light later defined as son of the morning. The name Lucifer is only used one time in the Bible because that is not the name of the devil. The devil's name is Satan. Lucifer, morning light, son of the morning. Satan means accuser, slanderer, and defamer. Revelations 12, 9 and 10 says, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brother is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. 
According to Revelations 22 and 16, Jesus says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright and morning star. So there's no doubt who the morning star is, and that is Jesus. If the devil can delude you into a false identity of himself, he can and will deceive and diminish the identity of yourself. The devil is not the opposite of God. Because to be opposite of something, the two must be equal. White is the opposite of black because they are both colors. Ice is the opposite of water because they are both the same composite. To be angry is the opposite of happy because they are both emotions. But the devil is not the opposite of God. But he has tricked the church and the world into thinking that he is the opposite of God to make himself appear more po powerful. The devil is simply a fallen angel, family. God is. Good God Almighty, he's God. So. The devil was created, but God is the creator. The devil can only be one place at a time, but God is omnipresent. He is everywhere at the same time. As Job, the devil is limited, but God can do anything but fail. Right. Satan uses man's means and strength to get his work done. Right. But God does not need anyone because he is omnipotent. Yeah. He is all powerful. Yeah. The song says, who can search his understanding? His thoughts are higher than ours. All power is in his hand. For my life, he has a plan. Great is our God Almighty. and He is strong in battle. Power belongs to our God. The devil wants to steal this identity of a God. 2 Corinthians 11 and 14 says, And no wonder, since Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. And he would like to steal your identity also. The devil in, he in heaven wanted to steal God's identity, but he couldn't. So he shows up in the Garden of Eve, Eden to steal man's. Genesis 3, 4, and 5 says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, and your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Again, the trickster says, I'm going to define you. Do as I say, and this is what you will be. This is, what, this is who you will be. What you are is not enough. And to be more compromised in this one area, and you can be whatever you like. And Eve and the Adam relented and lost the dominion that they possess. Yous can't do what yous won't, or yous will lose you self. <laughs> Since the devil knows that he can never be you, his job is to get you to never be you. So from your birth, the battle is waged. From your awesome, astonishingly made personage into a person pushed into being conformed to society. Pushed to be conformed into religion, into opinions, and to styles. He uses fears and weaknesses and upbringings and experience that reveals in us a fraction of the person we are called to be. The moon is 238,000 miles from the earth. If leaving the earth on its way to the moon, the space shuttle misses its, its coordinates by less than a millimeter. By the time it reaches the 238,000 miles, it will miss the moon by tens of thousands of miles because it compromised the coordinates. What am I saying? Some of you is not enough. We cannot continue to compromise who and what we are and still look to reach our wealthy destination. God wants all of you. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, God wants it all. God wants all. Yeah. Amen. The reason he wants it all of you because you are. You are the one. Yeah, yeah you are the one. Amen. You. Who are you? That is, what, what, what is the you, pastor? It is, the you is the sum total of who you are, the sum total of your being. It is what you came out of the womb with. Somebody say you. you. Yeah, look at somebody and say you. you. Yeah. It is not the things you possess. Those things reflect you, but they are not you. In every, in every one of us, it is a distinct quality and characteristic feature and property that makes you you. Psalms 139, 15 through 17, out of, out of, out of the Lene Miss Trice version, easy to read version. It says, God, you could see my bones grow as my body took shape, hidden in my mother's womb. 
you could see my body grow each passing day. And you listed all my parts and not one of them was missing. Mm. 139 and one says, Lord, you have tested me. So you know all about me. You know when I sit down and when I get up. You know my thoughts from far away. You know where I go and where I lie down. You know everything I do. Lord, you know what I want to say even before it leaves, even before the words leave my mouth. You are all around me, in front of me, behind me. Matter of fact, I feel your hand on my shoulders. I'm amazed at what you know. It is too much for me to understand. Look at somebody one last time and say, God knows you. There's a certain peace I have when I'm around people who really know me. Ah, yes. You don't have to explain when you're around people who know you. You don't have to pretend when you're around people that really know you. Ah, ah, yeah. You know, you, 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 and, and it's good to know. It's a comfort to know that God knows you. Ah, it's good to know because he knows what you did and, and why you do. You don't have to lie to him because he already knows. That's why David says, listen here, God. You know why I'm even going. Seventh verse out of the internet, New NIV, it says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? I go up to the heavens, you are there. Make my head bed in the depths, you are there. Arise on the wings of the, of, of the dawn. And if I settle on the far side of the sea, even your hands will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light will become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like day, for darkness is as light to you, for you created my innermost beings, you knit me together in my mother's womb. Ah, oh, shout God knows me. Ask Jonah, you can't get away from God. You can take a ship away from God to another country. Try to find, get with people who don't know you. Jonah tried. Let somebody else prophesy, he said. Let somebody else go. But the elements of the earth got troubled because of Jonah's disobedience. Romans 8 19 says, For the earnest expectations of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together unto now until you realize who you really are. There is something happening in the earth catastrophically right now because some of us don't see ourselves as the one. All of creation is waiting for you to understand your full potential, for you to walk into a full, full blown manifestation of your calling. Ah, why is that bird always showing up at your window and waking you up? Why is that dog always just barking at you <laughs> and trying to bite just you? What problem does he have with you? Well, every time you go on vacation, it storms or floods. Could it be that you're the one that God is calling on? And you're trying to run away from it? I said, that ain't true right there. The elements don't, we can't change the elements with what we do if my people, which are called by my name, should humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will they hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will do what? Heal their land. I'm telling you, the land is waiting for you to recognize that you're the one. The thorns and thistles grew up in the Garden of Eden because Adam and Eve did not understand that they were the ones. Before that, there was no thistles and, and weeds. All those things happened because Adam and Eve forgot their identity. Maybe they didn't grow up in Eden, maybe on the outside of Eden, in Jesus' name. So if you think, don't get stuck there in Jesus' name. There's something that is happening. There's something that the land is hurting because we need to know who we are. And so the wind told Jonah, I can't stop blowing until you relent and know who you are. The sea communicated the same. God said, you got to go to Nineveh and I can't take you where you want to go. The fish in the depths of the sea let Jonah know, Jonah, we can't go to Nineveh. You got to go where God wants you to go. Is it amazing that Amos prophesied during the same time as Jonah? But God didn't call Amos to Nineveh. Oh, yes. Can I tell you that Hosea was prophesying during the time of Jonah? Two great prophets, but God didn't call Hosea. Stop pointing and saying somebody else is supposed to go. I'm letting you know that God has sent a message and a word to you today to let you know that you are the one that I'm talking about today. 
This was Jonah. Though there were people on the ship who didn't know Jonah and were trying to help him stay masqueraded. This is not happening because of this. They finally relented and said, yeah, throw him overboard. <laughs> He's the one. When I was a boy, my mama used to sing a song. God rode one day in a windstorm. He rode one day in a windstorm. God rode one day in a windstorm. Y'all know that? And he troubled everybody's mind. Y'all don't know nothing about that. I need to go. I need to go. I need to go over. Somebody that remember that song. Anybody over here remember that song? You remember that song? God rode one day in a windstorm. He rode one day. It, God rode one day. And what did he do? He troubled everybody. Can I let you know everybody is troubled because you're running from God. And I love, I, I love the last part. They used to say, throw me overboard. Somebody remember that. Throw me overboard. Oh, yes. Y'all don't know that. Y'all don't know that. They say, throw me overboard because Jonah said, I got to hide in place. Then somebody say, in the word of God. Yeah, there you go. Can I venture to say that the storms that are happening around us, peace be still, will not cease them. They're not coming for anyone else's attention but yours because you are the one. Say, I'm the one. I'm the one. Ah, yes, I told the Lord one day. Yes, I'm about 60% done. I told the Lord one day, I love you. At least I know you love me, but the problem is you don't really love you. But whenever there is a deficiency of love, there is a dereliction of duty. We are created as an expression of God in the earth. And when we conform to the world system or to a religious system, we block God's expression of who he is and what he can be in the lives of others. There are so many people waiting and wanting an opportunity to be an expression of what they saw in themselves as children. The faith to be who it was that God created them to be before they were told to be someone else. And it has stemmed the tide of their dreams. And they just want to be happy till God gets back and then they will receive all they need. No, God has so much for you right now. Somebody say, God has something for me right now. God did not call your mama to this. He didn't call your idol to this. He didn't call your mentor. He didn't call your father. So stop trying to be like that. You've been looking for a sign. There it is, you are the one. I'm about to start preaching too early. The Bible says in Jeremiah 1, 4 and 11, God said, before I formed you in the womb, God says, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Who am I preaching to right now? I wasn't crying like this when I was, I was tuning, I was tuning at home. But I'm preaching to somebody right now. God says, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. At last, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak because I am too young. But the Lord says, do not say I am too young, but you must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out and he touched my mouth. Turn to somebody one time and say, he, God put his hands on me. Oh, when he touched me, I've not been the same. Ever since he put his hands on me, there's something different that happened in my life. When you've been touched by God, then you recognize I must be the one. Oh, I know y'all remember this song. Since I met the blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout until eternity roll. Why? Because he touched me. He touched me. And all oh, the joy that flooded my soul. Something happened. And now I know that he touched me and made me whole. Somebody say he made me whole. He says, I put my words in your mouth. See, today I point you, I point you over nations and kingdoms to uproot, to tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Like Jeremiah, we're always looking at things that will disqualify us from being used by God. And it, usually, it is usually always the fear of man's disapproval of us that causes us to cower and conform. Yes, ones, 
People will look for a reason to disqualify you, but you have already been qualified according to the word. Romans 8 and 30 says you have been called, justified, and glorified by God. And if God be for us, he, who can be against us? There you go, family. Yes, stop letting people compare you to others and stop allowing yourself to be compared whether it is in your favor or not. Girl, you were better than her. Man, you dress better than him. No, you just like their style better. Don't compare me to nobody else. There's too much comparison in the church. Too much comparison in the church. You gotta be like her. This you gotta pray like this. You gotta act like this. You gotta stop comparing me to everybody else. Because God has called me to reflect who it is and what it is he put on the inside of me. When you allow others to do that, it conforms your life to an, to an impression you made instead of the an expression that you are. Let me say it again. When you allow others to compare you to, to things and compare you and you accept it, it conforms your life to an impression you made instead of the expression that you are. And you will become boxed in by what others celebrate. And when you seek to do or be something else and there are no applause, you will go back to emulating the old instead of accepting your new. Why accept the old when you can have the new in Jesus' name? I'm prophesying over your life again that no matter what your age is, God is doing a new thing in you in Jesus' name. Y'all, I'm about finished here. I need you to make a confession. Come on, make this confession. I resist, I resist every, fear every fear and hindrance. And hindrance. I, say I say to all excuses, there are none. There are none. No, sin no sin or past will prevent me. Will prevent I, confess I confess that all of them are done. Them are done. I'm walking in his victory. In, his victory. In, the in the name of Jesus the Son. I surrender my life again today because I recognize that I am the one. Somebody shout glory in this house today if you believe it. Oh, I've got 15 minutes and I only need seven. There are too many people with, with the attitude, I'm good where I am in the church. I got a word from the Lord for you today. I can't say that's what he see said it like this, but here it is, you ready for it? God is saying through Larry Trice Jr., so what? So what that you good? So what that you're comfortable? So what that you, I mean, you're happy with where you're sitting? That ain't got nothing to do with God. So what you're comfortable? So what that you're contented? God says you are the one and you can't be contented doing the same thing over and over and over again. There are some, there's some people who would rather stay in prison and just live there in the jail and in the prison because they don't have to pay rent. They don't have to worry about anybody. They can eat three meals a day. Listen here, God has not called you to live a, a life of a bondage. God has not called you to live a life of poverty. God has not called you to live a life of isolation, but he has called you to go into the world, to preach his gospel, to sing his gospel, to be what it is he has called you to be. Somebody shout, I am the one. I am the one. Oh. Ah. Is a problem with your tax? You're the one does not mean, TJ, that you're always a leader. You're the one does not, does not mean that everyone or maybe anyone will know your name. But you being the one does not mean that you're in the front. Everyone knows about Joshua and the miraculous battle of how the sun was stopped. They know of Aaron who was the high priest and the spokesman for Moses. But that battle that was won needed more than just Joshua and Aaron. Needed a man by the name of Ur. But history is not sure who he was. They don't know if he was Miriam's husband. They don't know if he was Miriam's son. They don't know if he was just a, just a high priest. They don't know. They, 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 they changed him through because they don't really know who Ur was. How did he get a chance to hold up Moses' arms? When time came, they said, Moses just needs somebody to hold up his arms. He don't need anybody to burn the censers. He doesn't need anybody to hold his rod. He doesn't need anybody to go and prophesy. He doesn't, the only thing he needs is somebody in the middle of the battle 
to hold up his arms. Let me talk as a leader on the day. Sometimes I don't need you to preach. Sometimes I don't need you to give anything. Sometimes I don't need you to say anything. Sometimes I just need for you to. I hope I'm preaching to somebody on the day. Ur held his arms up during the miracle battle of the sun standing still. It brings me to my clothes, the very same man who told the world that Jesus was the one, got offended that his job was only to set the next person up. We have to be careful because being the one might mean that your job is just to set somebody else up. How do you respond when you, you being the one means that your assignment is to push others ahead of you? What does it mean when you're the one and your job is to take the people who are with you and turn them toward the other person to follow them? Mm. When you have to diminish your ministry so that somebody else's ministry can flourish. When you have to diminish your ideas so that someone else's ideas can grow. The devil discouraged John the Baptist in his prison time to question the assignment of the person he introduced to the people. And in doing that, he put to question his own authenticity. Being the one to hold up your leader's hand and support them in times of difficulty is not always the easiest thing to do. But you can get another chance to be the one because when God puts you with someone, your destiny is linked with theirs. And if you don't know that you are the one like Jesus, you will forfeit your promotion when they leave. There's some people at your job that God has connected you with. There's some professors. There's some presidents. There's some people that God has connected you with. And you're looking for things to happen one way. And God says, I want you to get there and I want you to serve them because right now you're not the one. But the time is coming, Elisha. The time is coming, Elisha, that Elijah won't be there. And when Elijah leaves, there's a double portion of anointing that's about to flow on your life in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, I want the double portion. portion. Elijah said, what is it that you want, Elisha? He said, listen, I want a double portion of your anointing. I'm letting you know, ask Naomi and Ruth. Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or the following after you. Where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, you can marry me too. I'm staying next to you because right now your name is bitter, but tomorrow your name is going to be blessing. I'm going to stay linked to you. Oh! You might be crying now, Naomi, but you won't always be crying. You might be going through something today, but you won't always be going to, through something. You better stay with the person that God has connected you with. Ones, let me tell you, as I go to my seat, the trials and difficulty being the one can be frustrating, but hold on. The tax can be vicious, but fight on. People who you knew would be with you, friends you thought would be your friend, will walk away from you, but keep on believing. The very people who, like John, told everyone that you were the one will now question and cause others to doubt that you are the one. But don't you give up. It will seem as if hell can and will break out on you. But the weapons that are formed against you, they will not prosper. When your very soul and your heart and your weaknesses tell you to throw in the towel and to give up because you're not the one to look for another, let me let you know today, shake yourself and say, I am the one. <laughs>